Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. 12 o'clock position, we have Yellow Ash Ball. Don't know why I said it that way, I just felt like doing it here. Bottom right hand corner, we have Jess. Jess! Should be, I should have been saying it right this entire time. It's not just Jess, it's Jess! Like, yes! Or yes! Um, pink Protoss. I like it when there's the alliteration with Protoss. I just like that. Pink Protoss, purple Protoss. That and the midnight blue Protoss. I'm tempted to make a silly ASMR StarCraft video out there, but I don't know. Maybe I should do that with April Fools next year. I missed my opportunity this year. I didn't come up with the idea until like, I don't know, April 15th, April 14th. Today is April 15th for people in the future that are listening to this. Pylon inside base, so we're not seeing anything cheesy right off the bat. But yeah. Ooh, sunshiny day. I am going in... What is this? Hour two of casting? So drinking the water. This is the one thing that was... And I'm hoping this can be... This is going to be my comment to turn, tournament organizers if they end up listening to this. I like that... I do agree that it's nice that when you have kind of like the best of sevens, the best of fives, the best of threes or whatnot. Yes, the better player does oftentimes end up exiting. But at the same time, I feel like for the audience it ends up being less interesting overall. Because it's when you have those quick elimination matches where it's best of one that anything can happen. And also, this is my concern. You guys can give me feedback on this double gateway opening here for just so going for more zealot. And again, I like this on these maps where, especially with this egg where you can, uh, yeah, even if you get that little, 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 little bit of a blockade, you can attack that zerg egg and open up that front door a little bit. Plopping down additional cannon. But my concern is with BSL and just the sheer volume of matches, which is difficult to get, to get out on a day, um, that also as a viewing audience, there's just, there's only so much StarCraft you can watch, right? And so, uh, ooh, this is bad. Ball with that probe. Okay, finally that probe getting in. Only a single probe on gas. Interesting. I'm wondering if this is... I'm kind of curious about this build. I haven't seen this before. Double gateway now, cybernetic score as well upon scouting this. And that could be that, okay, I see that there, so I'm just going to try to produce. I think the, the logic behind this is I see that it's double gateway. I know that this is a ground ramp map, so instead what I'm going to do is produce just two zealots and then get enough gas, just enough gas so that I can produce that one dragoon. And then I know I'm, I'm okay on the front. I think that's the logic behind this. Um, still no gas, by the way, from Jess. Initial one zealot blockade on that front door and some additional pylon. I like the pylon placement. But anyway, I leave that, you guys, discuss that in chat. Where you think more games is better, less games is better. My personal feeling is, is less games are better. Like, and also, yes, I know sometimes the best player doesn't end up winning. And not, you, you don't always end up with Bonneth or True Touch or whatever as the top contender. Because they can get knocked out in just some bad luck scenarios. Two Dragoons being produced. Yeah, I think that was it. Uh, more, more probes in the gas. And it looks like that probe going up and being attacked. Three Zealots moving out. But I think this should be fine. Two Zealots, two Dragoons with the blockade. We'll see how Jess adjusts. Still no gas from Jess. Actually moving out with an additional, with a probe, which I'm wondering if that's going to signal proxy tech. We'll come down to some micro. A little bit of a drone fidgeting out. But anyway, I think also that ability to have variants in play. Ooh, this is bad. The Dragoon's not in position to provide support against these three Zealots. That Dragoon actually needs to ignore that probe. Front door's breached. The three zealots moving in. One probe moving up to try to provide some additional support. I think Ball sh still should be able to hold this. It's, it's going to be three zealots versus two dragoons, and usually the zealots end up losing this. But they're yeah. Clean up there now. Three dragoons out in the front. I'm still curious about this probe out here, though, from Jess. Just maybe going for triple nexus to follow. So there's the natural expansion. Still applying pressure just to keep Ball in his base. And is on top of the... the yeah, this is the thing. I don't think Ball's even bothering to micro these as well as he would usually otherwise. Because he's like, this is fine. Like, I, I'll take the damage just to make sure I'm concentrating more on macro. Another zealot moving up. But th that's, a, that's a lost cause. Um, essentially. And that's a lot of zealots lost for not a lot else. Forge being plopped down. And I was almost wondering if Jesse was going to be like, I'm going to hope that ball plays defensively back and then go for quick two nexuses to follow this up if ball was going for an additional nexus of his own which I think I think that's why that zealot wanted to be up in there 
because Jess wanted to go in and see if there's a third a third gateway because that's a big indi indicator whether there's an expansion or not. But here's the problem for Jess. This is still no gas. Just now taking gas. And that's going to be a cannon defense against a lot of Dragoons. Which means Ball can do literally anything he wants, really. Robotics facility plopping down. And I think once he walks up and sees the cannons, he's going to realize the situation. This is one of those scenarios where... And he's plopping down an additional gateway. I actually would almost prefer a cancellation of that gateway and a quick two Nexus. Uh, granted, he doesn't have all the information I do. He might still opt to do that with an observatory following this robotics facility. Because here's a critical thing. Like, I'm saying all this being the observer having perfect information. Ball does not know how late this gas was. Just might be able to sneak back into this match, though. With the double nexus providing that economic superiority. And with these five cannons out in the front providing that, pa that spatial padding. But... This does give Ball free reign to either expand, uh, plop additional gateways, go tech, do anything basically unharassed. Single Zelt moving up, seeing the five cannons, and the lack of Dragoons. That lack of Dragoons in particular has to be a signal to Ball that something's going on in that space. And I hope he's going to go sneak out now and, yeah, grab that additional Nexus. Yeah. Unfortunately, taking it at this stage might put him behind overall. He's well behind in probes, Is does have a superior army that's somewhat negated by those cannons. So this is kind of the the math equation you got to do in your head. All of those zealots and this many cannons cost how many minerals, right? So the difference between that and what Jess is able to do with the economic swing back around, where does that put ball overall with, you know, kind of the mobile army, so on and so forth, calculus, you guys get it. Here's the thing though, ball has mobility, he has map control. And yes, good. Setting up for that third nexus. Three gateways still from Jess. A cannon, because Jess is now in the dark. Doesn't know whether there's going to be reavers or anything like that. Also, the other opportunity with those cannons is sometimes you get a lucky pick off of, of an observer if Jess isn't careful. Popping down additional gateway. So I think Jess, once she sees this, the thing is, is that observer, I think, will either the shimmer will get picked up, or the cannon is gonna spot that, and that is gonna be a signal to Jess as well that okay, I know Robotech's out there. And actually, with this cannon with the de bleh, the cannon with detection and those dragoons spotting it up, yeah, should be able to pick it off. So Ball has more information, but Jess also got that information as well. So Jess now knows that Ball's gone for more of a defensive play. Six gateways up, and that opens up opportunities as well. So we might see a swing from Jess to go just straight six gateways. There's the third gateway. And I think, I think, I'm not 100% sure. I think what we're gonna see here is once ball proxies, once this Nexus is, I don't know, three fourths the way up, we're gonna see a pause on unit production from ball. We're gonna see a bunch of gateways plop down. We're gonna see Jess Maybe get a Citadel of a Dune, go for Result Lake Speed, maybe something along those lines. Maybe some sort of supporting tech, I'm not sure. And then a mid-game sizable engagement. And I think that will be the critical thing. Observer uh, on the forward position for Ball, just in case. Um, here's a critical thing for Ball, though. Ball needs to get additional gateways. Even with what's out here. Because Cannon being mocked out there from Jess. Because Jess... With this much production and two nexuses fully saturated means a lot of units can flood out very rapidly. Supply count is even right now. Nexus is up for ball, so he's going to have the long-term economic advantage. He was producing everything in the meantime, so currently it's even. But as the game progresses, as ball is behind on gateways, Jess is going to have more and more of an opportunity to have more attack units out in the field. So if she persistently attacks and aggressively attacks and just whittles down the Dragoon and Zealot count. And if Ball does not adjust by getting, okay, Ball getting additional gateways down right now, I think this might turn into a longer game. We'll see. Could come down to micromanagement. Jess actually opting rather than to be aggressive to get her third. And actually that's going to swing things back to Ball. Back to Ball! It's like a ball going back and forth. So Ball now... So going to press up, be aggressive, 
I like this decision though. Go up, be aggressive, play the long-term game still. If this attack doesn't pan out, unfortunately, the Dragoon spread is going to work out very much in Ball's favor. Plus, there's the high ground, depending on how this ramps up. Ball crashing down on this army. Re-engagement from Jess. Jess moving forward. I think Ball's still getting the better end of this engagement overall, just because the, the Zealots are able to get on top of those Dragoons. And the reinforcement points and just the concavity. Yeah, Ball... Wrecking face. More reinforcements moving their way up. Just needs to be careful and back off with the army that's here, though. Or maybe she was just expending it, thinking, okay, maybe I need to do what I can do. And now maybe wants to cancel that nexus here. Because this is an overwhelming standing army. Ball has, I think, superior economy now. Yeah, has more gateways flooding out. Just should be able to reinforce. Actually, still just going to risk it. I think, actually, maybe that's the right call. Just risk it. Just hope that, that Ball doesn't scout it now. I think that's Jess's hope. Pull back to the cannons. Hope that Ball does not scout that 6 o'clock so you stay in this match. If it does get scouted, that's probably GG. Yeah, okay, does get scouted. Ball moves up. I don't think these Dragoons should risk leaving, especially with this ramp the way it is. Oh, no. Yeah, just, just getting the bad end of this engagement all the way around. Pulling the, the probes out is just going to have to sack that. And now I think Ball has a death grip. Three nexuses, full production. Let's look at the gateway count. Yeah, three gateways, six, seven, eight, eight gateways. All sustainable for production with the three nexuses just versus the six gateways opposite corner. No weapons upgrade as far as differential. We do have a Citadel of Adun and Zelt Leg Speed finishing for Jess. And re-engaging and also keeping the Dragoon count thin, plus weapons one upgrading for Jess. But this is just, it's gonna it's not gonna make a difference. It's just overwhelming force. And Ball should be able to finish this match right here if he wants to. <clears throat> You can see more Dragoons flooding, more reinforcements coming in. He is going to catch a single Dragoon um, right there. But even with these four cannons, it's just too much. It is too much. And Ball is going to be able to continue to flood that pressure through. Let's see if he continues to reinforce to the front. Or if he just plays Contain and goes for an additional base. No, he's going to end this now. Pressing up. That is Zealot Leg Speed. But I still feel this is just too many Dragoons to make this a difference. Although, when you have Dragoons kind of spread out like this, that can uh, make a difference. And there's still not, a lot of the units are kind of holding back here. So Jess still might get some breathing room. At least to survive for now. But it's not going to be enough to take an advantage. So Jess right now is kind of in a slow bleed situation. Templar Archives. I almost wish there was like a slow drop shuttle here to maybe sneak out with a DT. Single pylon there at six. But I'm almost wondering if Ball, once he has the rest of these reinforcements here, does need another observer, by the way is building it. Getting his own Citadel of Dune. But honestly, yeah, once he has another round of units, that as, as soon as this grouping of units is with the rest of his army, he can press this once again. And continue, honestly, expanding and doing the same. And it looks like he's even positioning to do so. Keep expanding and applying pressure. He can do it all right now. Inviting these units into his superior Dune Count Concavity. Yeah, that was a nice positional bait. He's like, go ahead and come into this, and I'm just going to hold position there. So now he's just... Yeah, I like this. I like this play from Ball. Um, he is grouping up. He is sealing Jess in. And he's just making sure that no additional expansions are out there. Taking his own fourth while continuing to apply pressure. High Templar out in the field for Jess. Just now researching Psystorm, though. So it's going to be a while before that happens. So Jess is kind of in one of these situations. So plopping down four gateways is kind of all in. So this is all in at this stage. Because that four gateways of production, plus no observers, plus, you know, everything else here. Point being, Jess is in one of these situations where, with the seal, with everything else, it's going to be a mine out. And you can see the main's already looking thin. And Ball is kicking up and getting his fourth. So even, even being down a probe, keep in mind that being down a probe and having additional expansion still ends up being better overall. Just trying to sneak a probe out and steal an expansion right there. And oh, those High Templar are, are exposed. And Ball, the thing is, is I don't know that he really cares about, like, losing a lot of this. Just trying to be desperate. He doesn't even care about even necessarily taking this Nexus down. He can be patient with this. He's regrouping, going ahead and letting them have that high ground, letting them go ahead and take that. Because he can also with his units swing take this at will kind of split the units in half yeah kind of moving out is he going to get that high templar as well because now he can just divide this army 
let the reinforcements take... Yeah, you can see him moving in with the reinforcements. Attack from both directions, and I do believe he has Zealot Leg Speed from above. Obser Ooh, good storms there, catching a good clump of those Dragoons that might keep Jess alive. Especially as these Zealots swing in, but loses that Nexus, has to cancel it, and again, more in Starvation Desperation mode. And more, and still more reinforcements coming across the minimap. So Ball backing up for now, waiting for these Zealots to, to come with this grouping. As soon as they're there, there's just going to be a turnaround, and you, you can see Jess kind of looking scattered across the minimap. Did manage to sneak two Dragoons out. But honestly, I feel like these two Dragoons, even if they scouted something out here, that would be more like saw this and it's desperation. High Templar here does have a storm to try to provide some defense to maybe establish... This is the other thing that's critical is, yeah, okay, you established this, but... For how long? Another base being taken by Ball. One critical thing here, though, from Ball is Ball has been a little bit lacking on his macro. So Just does have a short-term superior army count with those eight gateways of production. Just pressing it in. Maybe a good storm here could make the difference. Going to catch those three Dragoons. More reinforcements flooding down for Ball. He just needs to make sure that he continues to, yeah, continues to produce. Just with some nice micromanagement, though, able to clear this army out. And actually taking a huge supply lead. Wow. Just actually might have won this with that swing. Because Ball languished a bit plopping that additional nexus and not keeping up with his macro we'll see though just pressing out with a lot of additional units and that goes to show yeah just keep fighting keep fighting keep fighting sometimes you can sneak back into a match but look at these supply counts so ball back into his base here's the thing though it's not game over for him until this nexus goes down but Jess through some miracle macro moving up pushing in if she can get in here, good probe storm! Wasn't a lot there, actually, at the natural to even kill, but might be able to take this Nexus out. And Ball, all of a sudden, because he wasn't able to keep up with his macro, despite having a huge economic advantage, despite having equivalent gateways, producing a lot of Dark Templar, these Dark Templar might be able to think that, that swings it. Here's the thing. Okay, yeah, Ball loses his natural, but keep in mind he still has two and potentially three more mining bases. He didn't lose a lot of probes. What a match. Okay, now the DTs are there. That's a signal for Jess to pull this army back, maybe. Nope, gonna dive in even harder. Still no Observer. Smelling blood in the water wants to press forward and try to do as much damage as possible. But these DTs wiping the rest of this army out. That still might be GG. Storming a little bit more in that corner. Just yeah, I'm hoping Jess can pull this army back back to a protective ring of cannons. Just trying to set up for that nine. Kudos to Jess for get, for making this a match though. Also kudos for to Ball for having the wherewithal to get some DTs out. Finally, Ball realizing the macro problem and plopping down some more gateways. So it's anyone's game again. Although just still in a lot of trouble, still in a massive amount of trouble. Because only two mining bases, basically. Versus, what is this? Still four mining? One, two, three. Three. Three mining. So advantage still overall to Ball. Ball has DTs. He has a smaller ground army. Probe advantage has swung to Jess. But critically, there's no Robo. A lot of DTs out there. And the Naturals basically mined out. Because of all that time, Jess... Jess spent breaking out so essentially at one base three o'clock will be established not too long so it's one base versus three the thing for ball though is you got to get yeah got to be saturated so i think that was the other problem just didn't have the best probe saturation or maybe mining despite having all those bases problem for jess is i don't see a robo even being built where's the robo I think this top production thing is Jess. Okay, there is that the Robo? No. Where's the Robo? Hunt for the Robo. Somewhere out here. There it is. Long time before Jess is going to be in position even to move out with dark, the potential of Dark Templar. This is a lot of zealots. Providing kind of a soft contain. DT trying to, to work on that zealot. I think over the long term, as long as Ball keeps up with Macro, this should go back into his favor. I still like Jess's Huxpa. The, I, didn't say that right. Huxpa. 
Still didn't say that right. My voice. I need to drink. Ugh. Can't do the Kruh, that thing. Uh, to get it out. I like the feistiness. Of Jess. To keep this match even. Probe's waiting to mine here. To make it two base. Unfortunately, two base versus four probably shortly. Zealot's moving up. Probably should just abandon that for Ball. Ball, I think, honestly, should just wait until max. Ooh, storm across that. A lot of a lot of self zealot storming. DT's getting caught a lot under that storm. Archon's moving forward. More beautiful storms from Jesse. Still trying to press into this. Ball. Oh, I feel like he's these engagement points, though, are not in Ball's favor. It might not matter, though. Just because the Archons provide so much bulk damage. Good storm over that probe line. Catching a couple probes on top of everything. Well, it's kind of... Bad bad storm from Jess. Positive storm for Ball. Archon's on top of that probe line, decimating that. Jess down to 25 probes. That might, despite all this, that might be all she wrote. We'll see. Just now down to two paces once again. Ball has managed to breach. Get those cannons down. No reinforcements, though, once again. And Jess has some Archons of her own. Actually, it might be Jesse Mail. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'll just keep saying Jess. 9 o'clock base is breached and getting attacked. Might be recoverable. But it's still 24 probes versus versus 44. Ball with a significant supply lead. Jess holds. Still has 9. Like the tenacity. Still mining out of this inside 9. Or sorry, inside 3. Inside 3 base. Inside 3 and 3 o'clock. However, when we look at Ball in the opposite corner, it's already established the natural expansion here is well mining there. This is well saturated. Mains mined out, has all sorts of production. All Ball has to do, really, is remax, have a grouped army, and A move into the natural to win. So the opportunities for Jess to sneak back into this, they're closing. But honestly, I counted Jess out much earlier in this match. So I'm going to say that it's still perhaps anybody's game just because of the craziness that Jess has, thro that has shown us. They've shown us. Level 2 weapons just coming online, by the way, versus uh, whoop, level 2 weapons opposite corner, so even upgrades. So for even armies, it will be even micro counts. Ball has double the supply, but his army is not grouped. Also, finally, Observer from Jest is going to be able to sneak out and see what's out there. It's really just kind of... I think that's the thing that's kind of cost ball in this mid and late game. Is he is one macro, but two, he's been able to produce stuff, but the stuff really hasn't been gathered for really kind of solid grouping fights. Plus, the storms of Jess have really equalized this. Ball at double the supply. Now. But the funny thing is, is when you look out on the field, it doesn't seem like it. Just because of where the units are positioned and how they're grouped. Another Nexus being plopped down from Ball. And he also has a Scouting Zealot there at exterior locations to defend this. Now he's starting to get gathered. That's a lot of Archons. That is a lot of Archons. Has some High Templar of his own. Probe getting annihilated right there as he was trying to sneak through. So now Ball... Ooh. Just actually catching that army out of position. Is going to catch a High Templar here. <laughs> Just might have done it again. Just might have done it again. Might be able to sweep in and get right on top of the gateways. And now it's a base trade situation. Ball diving into the natural, but Jess pushing through to take that out. Ball will win this exchange through the long run, though. Simply because more units to work with, but also more bases to flee to. So Jess working on this... As the units are produced, this is the main production facility location that she's right on top of. If Jess can stay on top of some macro, might be able to sneak out of this still. Just doesn't have a lot of bases to produce anything. Has been able to draw stuff back. Unfortunately, yeah, I think Ball is doing this systematically, wiping this out. He's like, go ahead, take out this production. I've got more production down here. I'll just reestablish it. Yeah. Now I'm going to call this game for Ball, finally. But Jess made a match of it. Yeah? An absolute match of it. And I think, yeah, once this main gets taken out, that will be GG from Jess. Maybe she'll fight to... I don't know. Maybe they will fight to the end. Once this base is taken out, it's certainly GG. 
But w I gotta say, well fought. Well fought. I'm gonna... This is applause in the background from me in Jess's favor. I like it. I like it. And also, I think this is also part of a calculated thing of going into game three of just kind of trying to... This is kind of the thing you do in these sort of match situations is just trying to wear ball down a bit. Like, make this a really hard fought win so that he's more exhausted going into the third match. So, you know, save your energy, make it make it challenging, go from there. There's the exit from Jess. I assume there's a GG there. Gonna move into game three momentarily. I gotta say, Jess really, wow, played the crap out of that. Yeah? Chat agrees. Played out of her mind, says Skolivo. Minions agrees with yep. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. We will move on to game three of the winner's match.